In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step on how to deploy Medusa.js on Coolify. By the end, you'll have a fully running Medusa application deployed on Coolify and ready to scale. So grab a coffee, hit that like button, and let's get to it. I've also published an interactive blog post on the Thursday's Technologies website to complement the YouTube tutorial. The link for it is in the description down below and you can easily follow along and get all of the different code that we'll need for the YouTube tutorial. And for our VPS, I'm going to use a platform called Hostinger. Once you sign up for an account, you'll be directed to their dashboard. From here, you can select the VPS option and we're going to sign up for the KVM VPS. So on sign up, you'll be prompted to add a server location. Choose the one that is the closest to you. In terms of the operating system, you can use the Ubuntu system. For the password, pick a strong password and make sure to save this password. We'll need this lots later on during our setup. The great thing about Hostinger is you can pick and choose the hardware that you need for your project. In regards to Coolify, they do have minimum hardware requirements that we'll need to follow. So in our case, I'll use the KVM2 option as it meets all of our minimum requirements. Once you have your VPS up and running, you'll be directed to this dashboard. This contains all sorts of information about your machine, but what we'll need right now is the root access. So I'll copy this string here and move over to my terminal. Now we're going to connect to our virtual machine from our CLI. I'm using terminal since I'm on Mac OS, but if you're on Windows, feel free to just replicate the steps and follow along. So we're going to copy and paste our SSH string that we copied over from the hosting your dashboard and we'll be prompted to enter in our password. Just remember, this is the password that you created during the setup for your hosting or account. Once you're successful, you'll be directed to the root level of your virtual machine. And now we're going to install Coolify on the virtual machine that we've just set up. Now that I'm on the root level of my virtual machine, I'm gonna go ahead and install Coolify. So if you go to Coolify Get Started Installation, you can follow along with the prompts that we'll need. So I'll copy this command and run it in my virtual machine. As you can see, Coolify is being installed. This will likely take a few minutes. Once the installation is successful, you can access Coolify on your IP route at port 8000. So just copy this URL string and put it in your browser and you'll be directed to Coolify create an account. So we'll go ahead and enter in your information and make sure to remember this information for future logins. Now that you have Coolify up and running, we're going to deploy our Postgres SQL and Redis instances on Coolify. Go back to your Coolify dashboard and under your new project, we're going to add a new resource. In the new resource tab, you can simply type in Postgres SQL and choose the Postgres SQL option. We're going to use the latest version. So 17 default we'll use. And before you deploy your Postgres SQL instance, we'll choose the SSL configuration to enable SSL. We'll use this to be able to connect to our Medusa worker and service instances later on. But for now, you can go ahead and deploy this. So click that start button. And we're going to go back to our project and add another resource, this time for our Redis instance. Choosing the Redis option, go ahead and deploy using that start button. Once that's all up and running, you can see two instances. One is for the Postgres SQL and one is for the Redis instance. Now it's time to deploy our Medusa worker and Medusa server. When you're ready to deploy your Medusa application, we'll have to make a few different configurations on the Medusa config file. So firstly, we'll have to add a worker mode. This environment variable will let us run the application as either a worker or a server. Also, we'll add the Redis URL. Along with the Redis URL, we'll also add the Redis modules. And finally, we'll add some admin configurations. So we need to be able to disable and enable the Medusa admin, depending on if it's a worker or a server. And also we need a spot to be able to define our backend URL. And finally, we'll add a pre-deployed script in our package.json, which runs migrations anytime we deploy our Medusa app. After that, you can push your application forward and we can finally deploy our Medusa application on Coolify. We'll go back to our project and add a new resource. This will be the resource for our Medusa server application. 
So add a new resource and click the private repository option. This will allow us to use our GitHub account to be able to add our project. Once you've loaded the repository, there's a couple of different options that we need to define here. So for the configuration under branch, make sure your correct branch is selected. Also in the port, instead of 9000, we'll use port 9000 as this is where our Medusa application is going to run. After that, you'll be directed to the configuration screen of your Medusa application. We'll change a couple of different things here. First and foremost, we'll set our name as the server. Trust me, this alleviates a lot of different confusion later on, just having the server as named server and then having the worker named as worker. After that, I'll set a custom start command. Again, you can follow along with all of this on our blog post, so I'll just copy and paste it from there. Once that's done, make sure to click save. Once that's saved, go to the environment variables tab on your Medusa server application. Go to develop review, and we're going to add a few environment variables to this here. Again, you can copy and paste these environment variables from the blog post. And what we're going to do is we're going to save all of our variables for the time being, and we're going to add our backend URL. So this is the Medusa server domain name, and you can find this on the general tab just under domains. So this is auto-generated by Coolify. And we're going to copy this, go back to our environment variables, and we're going to add this as the backend URL. Along with the backend URL, we're also going to add this to the admin cores, auth cores, and then finally the store cores. Once that's done, again, make sure to save all environment variables. And now, as you can see, we still have the database URL empty and the Redis URL, URL empty. So we'll retrieve this uh, from our Postgres and our Redis instances. So going back to my Postgres, again, make sure that you have enabled SSL and we're going to copy this Postgres URL internal. We're going to add this as the database URL. And one thing to notice is there is a SSL mode required towards the end of my connection string. For the time being, we're going to remove this and then hit save. And now we're going to go and get our Redis URL. So same process as the database URL, go to your Redis project and make sure to copy the Redis URL. Again, copy and paste this as the Redis URL and hit save. And we're all set for this, so you can go ahead and deploy the Medusa server application. Once your deployment is successful, you can go to the logs tab and you should see server is running on port 9000. This tells us that the deployment is successful and everything is good to go. At this point, we can finally deploy the Medusa worker. So going back to the projects, and again, this is going to be very similar to the Medusa server. You choose a private repository, pick your repository of your Medusa project, load the repository. Once you load the repository, again, make sure to select the right branch. Instead of port 3000, we're going to do port 9000. Continue. Again, we'll be directed to our configuration screen here. Similar to our server, we're going to name this worker. And we also need a custom start command. So this start command is going to be a little bit different than the server. So I'll copy and paste the start command from our blog post. And again, make sure to hit save after you make any changes to the configuration. Now we're going to add in our environment variables and the environment variables are going to be very similar to the server with a few exceptions. So I'm going to go back to my server project and copy those environment variables. Okay, so I've copied my environment variables and a lot of this is going to stay the same. The things that we do need to change is disable Medusa admin to true. Says this is a worker. There's no need for an admin dashboard. And also the Medusa worker mode, we need to change this to worker instead of server as again, this is the worker. So after that's complete, I can go ahead and save all environment variables. And at this point, we're ready to deploy. So go ahead and hit that deploy button. Now that I have both the server and the worker running, I should be able to access the Medusa admin on my Medusa server domain name. 
So if I go to this domain name slash app, I should be directed to the login screen here. If you can access the Medusa login screen and you're seeing something like the site can't be reached, it's generally because of DNS cache and probing. So if you flush your DNS cache and you revisit that login screen, you should be able to see uh, what I have on my screen here. Again, since we're not on an HTTPS URL, I won't be able to log in since it cannot set any cookies at this point. You need the HTTPS for Medusa to be able to set cookies. In this case, it's going to be auth cookies. So what we're going to do next is we're going to connect our custom HTTPS domain name. So instead of this automatically generated domain name, it's going to be our custom domain name. In order to add a custom domain name, we're going to go to our domain name register. In my case, it's DreamHost. And I'm going to add a custom A record to my domain name. This tells the domain register which server to point the domain name to. So what we're going to do is add a new A record. And what the A record is going to be, it's going to be your IP address of your VPS. So if you bought your VPS from Hostinger, which was my case, I'm going to Hostinger dashboard and copy this IP4 address and use that as my value for my A record. Once that's done, I can add this record. Again, this will take uh, some time to be able to propagate properly. So be patient if it doesn't happen right away. Now going back to your Coolify dashboard, go to your Medusa server application and we're going to add your custom domain name under the domain names input. So delete the previously generated domain name and we're going to add the HTTPS non www version. But also we're going to add the www version as well. And just below it, you'll see a directions select input. For this case, we're going to direct all non uh, all www traffic to non www. Once that's done, you can go ahead and save the configuration. And before we deploy our application again, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the non www version of our domain name and set that in the environment variables for our Medusa backend URL and to all the different core settings. So again, swap this Medusa backend URL out and also add the, your custom domain name URL to the admin course, the auth course, and then the store course. Once that's complete, you can go ahead and redeploy your Medusa server application. And now we're going to go back to the Medusa worker and we're going to do the exact same thing. So go to your Medusa worker application, environment variables, and we're going to swap out our Medusa backend URL with our custom domain name and also add the custom domain name to all of the different core settings. Once that's complete, redeploy both instances, the worker and the server. Once both instances of your Medusa application are deployed, you should be able to access the Medusa admin on your custom domain. So for example, if I go on my custom domain slash app, I should be directed to the login screen. Now, if this is your first time logging into your Medusa application, you'll need to create an admin user and we can easily do that through the terminal in our Coolify dashboard. So to do that, go back to your Coolify server instance of your Medusa application and go to this terminal tab on the top left. Once you're on the terminal tab, you can connect to the terminal. And at this point, I can enter in the command to be able to create my Medusa admin user. So I'll do that. Once that's complete, I can go back to the login screen and log in with the credentials I just created. Now, if you need some seed products to be able to play around with, we can also run the seed command from our Medusa server terminal. So go back to your Coolify dashboard and we're going to run the command npm run seed. Once that's complete, I can go back to my Medusa admin and give it a quick refresh and I'll see a bunch of different products that I did not have there before, along with some store settings that are uh, created for you in order to be able to test out the Medusa admin. And there you have it. You have your Medusa application hosted all on Coolify on our very own VPS. 
If you run into issues or need help troubleshooting, reach out to me at Raj from 306 on my X account and I'll help you out the best I can. If you need a more advanced setup for your hosting infrastructure, feel free to check out my company 306 Technologies. We do all sorts of e-commerce development and we work a lot with Medusa as well. So feel free to check that out at 306technologies.com. We'll see you in the next video.